Afternoon all. If you're a collector of electronic bits and bobs like I am, you'll probably have lots of these. Power bricks or power blocks or power supplies, PSUs. Some people call these wall warts. I choose not to. So this one is uh, Sony 5.2 volts at 2 amps. Uh, this DVE is 12 volts at 1000 milliamps. However, there's a big difference between these two. Uh, this DVE is a linear power supply, an old-fashioned transformer based. It's very heavy. This Sony is a switch mode and of course it's much lighter. And I'll show you what the main difference is in practical terms. Ah, okay, it turns out that this Sony has a rather non-standard connector on there. This was actually for uh, one of those Palm Pilot things, the Sony Clie. So let's instead compare this 5 volt switch mode power supply, 5 volts at 2.5 amps, which came from one of these um, network cameras, IP cameras. This one's a pan and tilt one. Uh, with this 12 volt, uh, 1000 milliamps, so 1 amp power supply, and this was supplied with, uh, I think, a wireless access point, an old one that I no longer use. And the difference is that the 5 volt power supply measures 5.14 volts and the 12 volt linear power supply measures 16.64 volts. So the switch mode 5 volt power supply is very accurate, uh, 5.14 volts. The linear uh, 12 volt power supply is way out, 16.6 volts. Um, and that's because these linear power supplies tend to be unregulated. Now, I want to build a multi-voltage power supply or a split power supply, uh, it depends which way you look at it, um, of 12, minus 12 and plus 12. So I found these two switch mode regulated power supplies. This one is uh, 12 volts, what's that, 1.5 amps DVE. This one is a Stontronics, uh, what's that, 12 volts at 1.25 amps. Now, both of them appear to have had their plugs cut off, so I've just got bare wire ends on both of these power supplies. And I'm going to attach the positive of one to the negative of the other and see if I can get a total of 24 volts out of the two power supplies. So, on this one, negative is the wire with the ribbed markings on it, and that's 12.1 volts, that looks okay. And the other one is also negative on the ribbed wire, and that's giving me exactly 12.00 volts. So let's um, attach the ribbed wire on one of the power supplies to the plain wire on the other. So I've got the positive lead of my meter going to the most positive connection. The two centre connections are uh, just twisted together at the moment. Negative lead on the most negative connection. Now I should get 24 volts between these two extremes. Uh, the other question, of course, is will this explode? It shouldn't do because um, these power supplies should be galvanically isolated from the mains and therefore electrically isolated from each other. So I've plugged them both into this old style uh, two-way adapter and I'm going to plug it into the mains. Well, despite this looking like one of those public service announcements, don't overload your main socket, uh, I've plugged this in, nothing's gone bang, let's take a look at the voltage. And across the outer two wires we have 24.1 volts, so that works. Now of course it's 24 volts if I put my probes on the outer two connections, but if I move my ground reference, which can be my negative uh, probe, to the centre tap, then I can have plus 12 on this side and minus 12 on this. Let's just check that out. So with the negative crop clip on the centre terminal, positive on the most positive side, of course we have plus 12 volts. This meter has this annoying DC indicator which looks like a minus sign but it's not. So that's plus 12 volts. And now I've kept my ground connection at this center point and put the uh, positive term or the red terminal on this negative point and the meter is now reading minus 12.1 volts. Now I've got a couple of projects coming up which need a multi-voltage or a split voltage power supply and this is one of them. This is the Banggood DDS signal generator um, that I've yet to build. And I've kind of been putting this off because this power supply was going to be a problem. We've got plus five volts relative to ground, plus 12 volts and minus 12 volts relative to ground. But that should now be possible 
uh, because I've uh, worked out that you can connect these switch mode power supplies together and create these multi-voltage rails. And the other one is the ETI Vocoder project. And that needs uh, the same three rails, plus 12 volts relative to ground, minus 12 volts, and plus five volts. Now, the only thing about this is that this is an audio project, and there is a possibility that noise from the switch mode power supplies might cause interference. But of course, I could still use the same arrangement with the unregulated linear power supplies, which contain transformers, bridge rectifiers, and smoothing capacitors, and then just fit my own regulators after that to regulate the sort of 16 volts that we were getting on that 12 volt power supply back down to 12. And I can even use a mixture of linear power supplies for the plus and minus 12, which do all the analog stuff, and a switch mode power supply for this bit down here to generate the plus five, which as far as I remember in the vocoder is only used for the uh, PPM bar graphs. Now I've just located this uh, five volt power supply, five volts, 2.5 amps, which also seems to have had its plug cut off. And that's got a bit of um, chocolate block on the end and that's given me an idea. So at this end, I've got my common ground here for the minus 12, uh, the plus 12, which is here, and the 5 volts, which is up this end. So that'll be plus 5 there, that'll be plus 12 there. But this one's flipped the other way around. The plus side of the 12 volt power pack has gone to ground. So this point here will be minus 12 volts. I mean, as long as I label it all, then it'll all, st it'll all make sense. This end's not looking so good. Um, I'm going to have to go and get to one of these multi-way adapters because using these two-way adapters, uh, not only does the topology not really work, but it's all starting to look a little bit dangerous. Now this end looks a lot safer like that. And up at this end, I've got my three outputs, uh, the minus 12 here, plus 12 here, five volts here. And if we look at the three meters, minus 12 on the left, plus 12 in the middle, and positive five volts on the right hand side. So yes, it seems that you can take three switch mode power supplies, uh, connect one side of each of them to a common ground point like I've done here, and create a multi-voltage or split voltage power supply. Cheerio.